After Serenade, Price returned to RKO Pictures for the 1956 crime drama, While the City Sleeps. The film opens in New York City where a drugstore delivery man named Robert Manners, played by John Drew Barrymore, is dropping off a package to a woman named Judith Felton. When she isn't looking, he pushes the button lock on her door, leaving it unlocked, then sneaks back in when she's alone and running a bath. The police find her murdered and the words, Ask Mother, scrawled on the wall in lipstick. She is the latest victim of a serial killer running loose in the city. Cut to Kind Enterprises, a news organization that houses the New York Sentinel paper as well as a nightly television news service and newswire. Word of the murder comes across the newswire and the final request of owner Amos Kine on his deathbed is that the paper uncover the murderer, which he has dubbed the Lipstick Killer. His son, Walter Kine, played by Vincent Price, takes over after he passes away. Unfamiliar with the business, he realizes he needs the help of a second-in-command. He decides to use this murder as an opportunity and gathers the three top ambitious men in his organization. Mark Loving, played by George Sanders, John Griffith, played by Thomas Mitchell, and Honest Harry Kreiser, played by James Craig. Kine is establishing a new position of executive director and offers it to whichever of the three solves the mystery of the lipstick killer. News anchor Edward Mobley, played by Dana Andrews, is caught between the three men. He's not interested in the position himself, although Griffith tries to enlist his help. Mobley is dating secretary Nancy Liggett, played by Sally Forrest, and proposes marriage to her. He comes up with the idea of taunting the killer on the air, addressing him directly on the evening news in hopes that he will expose himself. He informs the killer that a strand of his hair was found at the scene of the crime and he will soon be caught. The killer is watching and gets furious. It's Mobley's plan that the killer, enraged at him, will try to strike back for revenge. He decides to use his fiancée as bait, with her permission, and has their engagement announcement listed in the paper. He also has an undercover cop assigned to tell Nancy at all times. The majority of the film follows the various newsmen as they jockey for position and try to uncover the killer's identity. The killer doesn't actually murder anyone else, interestingly enough, although he does make an attempt at strangling Kine's wife, Dorothy, played by Rhonda Fleming. She manages to get away, however, and the killer is chased into a subway tunnel by Mobley before eventually being captured by the police. While the City Sleeps was directed by Fritz Lang, director of such famous titles as M, Metropolis, and The Testament of Dr. Mabuse. It was based on the 1953 novel The Bloody Spur by Charles Einstein. This was Price's final film for RKO Pictures. This film was made just two years after the U.S. subcommittee hearing on juvenile delinquency, where so-called experts gathered to present evidence proving that comic books were corrupting the minds of the youth of America. This anti-comics crusade mentality is well reflected in the film in the scene where Mobley is taunting the killer on television. If you look carefully, you'll notice in the scene that the comic he's holding in the close-up is a Tales from the Crypt comic. You read the so-called comic books. When he drops it, they cut to a generic comic called The Strangler. EC Comics, the publisher of Tales from the Crypt, were among the hardest hit of companies in the fallout from the Senate hearing and were forced out of the comic book business altogether shortly thereafter. This movie was made just one year prior to the infamous Ed Gein case, one of the most gruesome real-life American serial killers. This makes the lipstick angle of this film and Mobley's taunting of the killer as a mama's boy especially interesting. You're a mama's boy. As Gein was also obsessed with his mother and was the inspiration for Hitchcock's famous slasher film Psycho in 1960. The first murder in this film is an early precursor to Psycho, taking place in a bathroom much as the famous Janet Lee scene would four years later. John Drew Barrymore, who plays the killer in this film, is the son of famous actor John Barrymore, best remembered for Jekyll and Hyde in 1920. He is also the father of actress Drew Barrymore. Price had previously worked with several of the actors in this film. He had appeared with Dana Andrews in 1944 in the film Laura. He had worked with George Sanders previously on House of Seven Gables and Green Hell, both in 1940, and he had worked with Sally Forrest on Son of Sinbad in 1955. While the City Sleeps comes so close to being a great film, but unfortunately falls just short. It has all the right ingredients, romance, mystery, intrigue, action, 
But unfortunately, this all takes a back seat to the newspaper plot, which, while timely in 1956 when newspapers were king, seems quaint and antiquated now. What could have been a top-notch thriller becomes a rather mundane police procedural, told from the reporter's perspective. Not a bad film, but disappointing. Price does a great job with the small amount of work he's given, and the relationship between him and his two-timing wife is an interesting dynamic. Next up, Price would work with another legendary director, Cecil B. DeMille, in The Ten Commandments. What do you think of that? special TV offer a famous fan of Agatha Christie. I am Vincent Price, and I have a book for you. It is perhaps the most spellbinding mystery ever written, an astonishing tale by that unchallenged queen of mystery, Agatha Christie, Murder on the Orient Express. This book is one of her best, one of my personal favorites, and yours to enjoy free for 15 days as your introduction to a publishing triumph. The only complete Agatha Christie mystery collection. Dazzling labyrinths of deceit, intrigue, detection. Imagine the hours of pleasure you could spend in the arms of a good mystery, in the company of some of the most delightful characters in literature. Jane Marple, uncanny. Hercule Poirot, brilliant. Join these delicious detectors of crime to relish the well-laced clues. Weigh the evidence, unveil the villain. Accept Murder on the Orient Express, then volume by volume your library bills. Each book is designed to last for generations, hardbound in plush, Sussex blue with elegant end papers. Books you and your family will love to own. And then to make it irresistible, we will also send along free, and then there were none, to add to your first volume in this collection. A rich enjoyment for years to come. Call this number to receive Murder on the Orient Express, your first volume in the Agatha Christie collection, free for 15 days. Keep it for only $9.95 and receive future volumes about once a month for free examination at the same low price. There's never a minimum of books to buy and you may cancel at any time. If you choose not to keep Murder on the Orient Express, return it. And then there were none is yours free, no matter what you decide. Call 1-800-692-4000. That's 1-800-692-4000. I urge you to call now. 